is the iPhone 14 about to be the biggest upgrade ever? Some have said that the iPhone 13 is kind of boring, and I've said that Apple is sort of making boring updates to the iPhone lineup, but don't speak so quickly because what Apple is working on next year might just totally change everything. This video, let me actually break down the eight biggest things that you need to know right now about what's coming next with the iPhone 14 in 2022. Let me tell you why the iPhone 14 is so exciting, why it might just be the perfect iPhone, and might actually just totally change everything. And a big thanks to Vessi for sponsoring this video. There has obviously been no shortage of criticism about this year's 2021 iPhone lineup. Some see the iPhone 13, and I guess more specifically the iPhone 13 Pro, as a pretty substantial update. You've got ProMotion display technology in the displays. You've got a better camera system. There's a lot to love about the iPhone 13 lineup. But at the same time, even myself, as much as I love these phones, can honestly say that this is probably more of an S year upgrade. It's a lot of under the hood improvements that are a little bit more incremental that sort of pave the way for what is coming next, next year with the next generation iPhone in 2022. And what we're learning about the iPhone 14 right now from multiple sources and leaks and rumors paint a really exciting picture about what Apple is working on next. And I'm honestly more excited than I have been in years about what Apple is looking to launch next year with the next generation iPhone. Of course, obligatory disclaimer here, please take everything I'm about to say with a little pinch of salt because things are obviously bound to change in the next 12 or so months. But as of right now, there's a lot we know about the iPhone 14 and Apple is looking to make some pretty radical design changes and really changes to the entire lineup that you just gotta know. First things first, what is the fate of the mini iPhone? The 12 mini was by all accounts not a huge success. The 13 mini is a better upgrade and it's better than even the 12 mini from last year, but it's not shattering any records as of right now. And we've heard rumors for months that the mini lineup is sort of short lived and there will not be a 14 mini in 2022, which sort of begs the obvious question, if there is no mini, what's the fourth iPhone we could see next year? So as of right now, here's what we know. The iPhone 14 lineup is gonna look a little something like this. There's gonna be the 6.1 inch iPhone 14, the 6.1 inch iPhone 14 Pro, the 6.7 inch iPhone 14 Pro Max, and then a 6.7 inch iPhone 14 Max. No Pro Max, iPhone 14 Max. Essentially, Apple is looking to give us two screen size options in the high end and the low end. So you're gonna have a Pro and Pro Max as sort of the top end phones, and then a regular 14 and a 14 Max as the lower tier phones, which actually I think makes a whole lot of sense. For example, I know a lot of people love the mini iPhone for its small compact size, it's portable, it's pocketable, it is really nice to see, but also at the same time as many people love the mini iPhone size, a lot of people like the large screen iPhone size as well. A lot of people want the biggest display possible. For example, my parents, they both have 10S Maxes because they want the largest display possible. And if I was to go and replace their iPhones today, my only option that's really equivalent is to get them a 13 Pro Max. They don't need a ProRes video recording. They don't even need the telephoto lens or other uh, pro end features like ProMotion. They just want the largest display possible. So again, I guess it's good for Apple, they get some more money from those Pro Max users who don't really need the Pro features, but on the other hand, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense for iPhone buyers. That's why what does make a whole lot of sense is an iPhone 14 Max, this larger 6.7 inch display that doesn't have all the Pro end features, maybe doesn't even have ProMotion and stuff like that, but what it does have is a smaller price tag for those looking for the largest display on the iPhone possible, but who are not looking to break the bank. The next big change here with the iPhone 14 that we're expecting to see is with the design. We've heard Heard from multiple sources, including Mark Gurman over at Bloomberg, that the iPhone 14 is expected to get a radical design change from what we have right now with the iPhone 13 series. And according to John Prosser, who sort of gave us a first look at the design, a whole lot is going to change in one sense, but also in another sense, Apple is sort of just refining this industrial design language we've had for the past few years. What you'll notice here at first glance is that the iPhone 14 actually is very reminiscent to the iPhone 4 from 2010. It's still got sort of the industrial design it's got the boxy corners, but it also has a little bit of that DNA here in 2022 with the round volume buttons, sort of the uh, different redesigned uh, sort of speaker mesh at the bottom. It's a little refined, it's a bit more modern, and I think this looks just fantastic. 
Another big change here expected with the design is with the camera bump on the back. As we know with the 12 Pro and specifically with the 13 series this year, the camera bump seemingly gets bigger and bigger and more noticeable every year. But with the 14, that is going to change. Apple is looking to supposedly remove it entirely or basically almost remove that camera bump on the back by making the chassis of the phone thicker. It's going to be a little bit uh, larger and should accommodate that camera bump sort of in the back of the phone. So it's a little bit more flush on the back and doesn't protrude as much as it does on the 13 series this year. And of course, alongside any rumors of a redesign or any big changes to the iPhone, obviously comes the question of the port. Are we going to have a port on the iPhone 14? Could Apple finally switch to USB-C or will we get lightning once again next year in 2022? Well, I wish I could give you better news than this, but it looks like according to what we know right now, lightning is sticking around on all models, at least for another year. No USB-C, no portless iPhone. It's just gonna be lightning for another year. In addition to that big design change, another big change expected with the iPhone 14 is with the notch, or specifically, the lack of a notch. That's because what we know right now is that at least on some models of the iPhone 14, there will not be a notch. The true depth system for Face ID is gonna go under the display, and Apple's just gonna leave a small hole punch at the top of the display for the selfie camera. And obviously, this is a really big deal. And I think what's so weird about this too is that Apple really didn't change the notch so much at all since the iPhone 10 in 2017. Then they made it 20% smaller on the iPhone 13 series, the first change we've really ever seen. And the next year, rumors tell us that it's gonna go away entirely, at least on some models. On one hand, I'm a bit skeptical because that seems like a radical change to make from one year to the other. But if the iPhone 14 is really sort of uh, looking to be and shaping up to be a really significant upgrade, it does make sense for Apple to finally remove the notch. And I, for one, would be very happy to see that finally go and just get a small hole punch right at the top. Now, another question I have for you guys, I guess right off the bat here, is what are your thoughts on the hole punch versus the notch? Some people, like myself, don't even notice the 20% smaller notch on the iPhone 13. And I think really the only change we're actually going to notice is if the notch finally gets removed, like it looks like it's going to be on next year's iPhone 14. Are you a fan of the notch? Would you rather have the hole punch? What are you leaning towards one way or the other? Let me know down below. I know this is a little bit uh, controversial. Many have uh, different opinions on this. Would you rather have a notch or a hole punch? Let me know down below. Obviously, there are some questions as to which phones would actually get this hole punch notch. Is it just reserved for the Pro series, maybe just the Pro Max, or could we see it across the entire iPhone 14 lineup? Well, as of right now, it looks like this is not gonna go across the entire lineup. It's probably just going to be reserved for the Pros, and even I wouldn't be surprised if it's just a Pro Max high-end feature if it's only on one iPhone. So if you want sort of the notchless phone, you're gonna probably have to go Pro next year and maybe even go up to the Pro Max, but we just don't know as of right now. And then also, speaking of sort of displays, what about ProMotion? This has been a Pro End feature on just the 13 Pro and Pro Max. I really like ProMotion. This 120 Hertz is really nice. Could we see that sort of make its way down the line to the iPhone 14 and iPhone 14 Max next year? Another great question, but as of right now, it doesn't look like it's gonna happen. Apple looks like they're going to be keeping it sort of a Pro End feature on the high end, just sort of like LiDAR. And we're really starting to see some major differences here take shape between the Pro End models for next year and the regular models. It looks like next year, if you want all the bells and whistles, you're gonna probably have to go pro. Before we continue, I wanna take a quick break and show off some of my favorite shoes of all time made by this video's sponsor, Vessi. Now, for those of you who haven't heard of Vessi, I have the honor of introducing you to some of the most sleek, stylish, and comfortable sneakers that I have ever owned that are also 100% waterproof. Perfect for any day, rain, shine, or anything in between. These are truly the perfect everyday sneaker. Now, I don't know if I'm alone here, but I've always been a little particular on the shoes that I wear because I want shoes that are stylish, but also lightweight and durable and comfortable. And that's harder to find than you think. But Vessi sneakers just sort of check all the boxes they look good, they're waterproof, they're comfortable. And fun fact, not only am I holding this one in my hand, but I'm wearing them, a little behind the scenes here, on my feet right now. Vessi sneakers are sustainably made and use Dymatex, which is a dual climate knit, which will keep you cool in the summer and warm in the winter. It doesn't feel like these shoes should be waterproof, but they are. And it's amazing not only to see in action, but also to feel in action, because that horrible feeling of wet socks and wet shoes is a distant memory with Vessi sneakers on your feet. And in addition to awesome sneakers, Vessi has also got an excellent array of accessories you can pick up as well, like some really nice, really comfortable Vessi socks and 
a really nice hat. If you wanna be outdoors, keep your head as dry as your feet are with your Vessi sneakers, pick up this hat, it's really awesome. Vessi's got a lot of awesome stuff. I love what they're doing, I love the sneakers. I think you guys should check it out today. So if you wanna learn more, pick up some sneakers for yourself, hit that link right down below to learn more and use the coupon code THEAPPLECIRCLE to get $25 off your Vessi shoes or head to Vessi.com slash THEAPPLECIRCLE to learn more. And again, use the coupon code THEAPPLECIRCLE to get $25 off your next pair of Vessi shoes. And last little bit of info here on the display, we have gotten some more questions about Touch ID. Could we finally see Touch ID come under the display? It was gonna happen in 2021, what happened? And what we know right now is that it's probably not gonna make the cut for next year as well. Touch ID is not looking to come back in an under display uh, reader. It's not gonna come back on the side. It looks like Apple is sort of moving forward and doubling down their approach with Face ID being the main uh, form of authentication on the iPhone 14. So if you wanna have Touch ID, I guess your only option right now is to go with an older iPhone or the iPhone IC. It does not look like it's making a comeback on the iPhone 14 next year. Powering the iPhone 14 series under the hood will of course presumably be the A16 Bionic processor, the most powerful, the most efficient processor we have ever seen in an iPhone coming next year. And also the Snapdragon X65 cell modem, which surprise, surprise, actually has some satellite capabilities for presumably sending messages and making phone calls. Limited in capacity, of course, but apparently that functionality is there. That was something that was supposed to come to the iPhone 13 series that didn't actually happen. So maybe that could come next year with the iPhone 14. And also we are hearing some rumors about a vapor chamber cooling system that Apple is aggressively testing to go into the iPhone 14 next year. This might just be a Pro Pro Max feature, but uh, it could be coming across the lineup as well. Not sure how this one's gonna land, but we could see a better cooling system in the iPhone 14, at least some models next year. Now the new design, the smaller notch, all that stuff is all well and good, but I'm sure a lot of you guys are curious about the camera changes to the iPhone 14. Obviously, this is a big area of interest for many people. And what is expected to change next year with the camera setup on the iPhone 14? Well, as of right now, not a whole lot is known, specifically with the 14 and 14 Max, we're not really hearing of any changes as of right now, but with the Pro and Pro Max, there are a couple of big changes expected that again, could just make the Pro and iPhones for next year better and better. According to analyst Ming-Chi Kuo, the main camera of the iPhone 14 might be getting a substantial boost in the megapixel department, going from 12 megapixels all the way up to 48 megapixels. So this should give you higher quality images, uh, basically more pixels for the system to work with, should just give you a better overall, more versatile camera setup on the 14 Pro and Pro Max. Also, Ming-Chi Kuo says that these phones should be capable of 8K video recording, which is again, pretty crazy to see on the iPhone, not something we've seen uh, on the iPhone thus far. Far. And also we could see this periscope zoom lens as well. This one's a little bit more iffy if it's gonna happen or not. Essentially this would give you 10X zoom on uh, the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max, which would be really cool to see, but we really don't know how this is all gonna play out right now. So potentially some big camera upgrades coming to the 14 Pro and Pro Max that could just make the iPhone 14 better and better. And man, I just really want one right now. There are some other small odds and ends rumors here. Maybe a two terabyte storage option on the Pro and models, maybe some new colors as well. But as of right now, this is sort of it. This is what we know about the iPhone 14. The big stories here, of course, it's that new 14 Max display size at the cheaper price. It's the hole punch on the Pro Max, at least we're expecting to see that. It's the new design, it's the better cameras. The iPhone 14 is shaping up to be a really exciting phone. Of course, again, things will change over the next 12 months or so. So just uh, expect some things to sort of evolve with these uh, rumors and uh, the new information that comes out over time. But as of right now, iPhone 14 is looking really exciting. No crazy display on the back, no under display touch ID. But besides that, besides sort of the dream iPhone, this looks to be a really great upgrade, even from the iPhone 13 Pro. You're getting a lot here. Now, anyways, what are your guys' thoughts on the iPhone 14? Is this the iPhone that could just be the best upgrade ever? Are you going to upgrade? Are you excited to see uh, sort of this iPhone 14 become reality? What's the most exciting thing you wanna see on the iPhone 14? Uh, let me know in the comments down below. I am excited for this. I think it's really uh, nice to see sort of the iPhone 4 DNA uh, in 2022. And this looks like by all accounts to be uh, a very exciting upgrade for every iPhone owner. Owner, but I'm curious, what are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments down below if you're excited or not. As always, thank you guys so much for watching the Apple Circle. I really appreciate it. I'm Robert Rosenfeld, and I will see you all in the next one.